Steph, and we've got our Carlisle Street Safe Streets um, workshop. So I'll hand across to you guys. Thank you very much. Um, so for those who don't know me, I'm, I'm Owen Mate from the transportation team, um, along with Steph Cunner from the city strategy team, you probably know already, um, and who's been, uh, two of us have been mainly working on this project along with a kind of cross-council team um, over the last year and a bit. Um, so I know you a uh, busy morning already, but we want to take a little bit of your time just to talk about uh, the results of the Carlisle Evaluation Report. Um, and also, to we're really keen to get your feedback and ideas on where we're going next with this project. Um, so feel free to jump in as we go along uh, with questions, but we've also got plenty of time um, afterwards to, to talk about this. Um, we might even be able to catch up a bit on, on, the, on the day so far. Um, so is this on, our, on the hub or yes. anything? It is on the hub as okay. well, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So before, I uh, thought it would be useful just to go into a, a little bit of the history of this and how we got where we are. Um, it does stretch back a few years, uh, issues with Carlisle and, and conversations about what to do with it. But... Um, I'm just going back to 2021, where there was a, a research project by Focal, a local research company, which identified it as a, as a problem street, really. There's no other word for it. Um, and from then, there's been various solutions proposed uh, to, uh, to, to try to address the, those issues. Um, so we saw an opportunity mid-2022 uh, to apply for funding from NZTA. That would be 90% funding uh, for the, from the Streets for People uh, program, along with two other programs as well. I know um, a few people here today helped us um, in preparing that bid to NZTA at that time with videos and messages of commitment. So, and I know um, that makes a huge difference to NZTA when it comes to deciding funding like this. Uh, just to, uh, uh, just to know that elected members are behind that. So, thank you for that. That did play a role in us being awarded that funding. So they announced Carlisle as, as one of the recipients of nationwide funding round about uh, later, mid-2022, along with about 12 other councils, I think it was. Um, and then we started launching the project after that. Um, one of the things that distinguishes Streets for People is there's a much heavier emphasis on community engagement, stakeholder workshops, um, and, and talking to people about possible changes. And we spent um, a good... Uh, slice of the early part of 2023 doing that, which was unfortunately interrupted by uh, Gabrielle, which set us back a little bit. And then we started making changes to Carlisle, uh, the latter part of 2023, which brings us to, to mid this year, where those changes were completed and Focal were then engaged to, to do the um, community evaluation report that was distributed earlier, and which we're going to talk about now very quickly, but I can't really talk about that timeline without also talking about um, the Innovating Streets, which was a program which is a forerunner of Streets for People by a different name, um, and that was something before my time, but which Steph worked on, um, and we put Shakespeare uh, and West Key projects up for that. Um, and it's a very similar process, uh, just a different name, um, and a very different environment as well. Um, but it gives a good idea of the kind of process um, uh, that uh, Streets for People uh, is involved with. Um, personally, I, and I know this was a tricky one because uh, a few years ago, I remember talking to the bar owners along West Key, talking about making this one lane only, and they kind of laughed in my face. But the idea with Steph took it on after that, uh, as, a, as, a, as an innovating streets project. And the idea is that you, you trial changes in consultation with stakeholders uh, and you change things as you go along. And that's very successful in, in trying to address tricky problems like this because um, I think if you ask bar owners now along there whether they'd like to go back to what they had before, they'd say definitely not. Um, 
Um, and this picture is probably a good representative, representation of the process as well, because it doesn't look that, like that now. Things have changed, the cycle lanes changed, there's a boardwalk there now, mm -hmm. and that's very much part of the process. You make temporary changes, you update it until you arrive at a solution that more people are happy with. Um, so that would be one of my favorite places in Napier, but going to one that's nobody's favorite place is back to Carlisle. Um, and this little graphic was produced very early on in the process, about 2021. Um, and it neatly sums up some of the issues that it's noisy, it's busy, um, it's dangerous. Everyone thinks, uh, feels unsafe safe there. Uh, and there's all kinds of car parking issues as well. And it's not an easy um, street to fix. There's no um, instant solution, magic solution. Um, and um, it's in that terms, uh, uh, and this is what interests in NZTA to it. It's a problem street in that, every, uh, like every town around New Zealand has, you're not going to run in there and change it overnight. Um, you might have seen this video before, but this is Paul Dave Kirsten from the transportation team. He's not a cyclist, um, and he probably won't be again. But um, <laughs> this was this was filmed Hello. early on. Uh, gives you an idea of, of what it feels like. Oh, he won't be getting on his bike again soon, and you can see, see why he's doing everything right. He's trying to avoid the, the car door zone, and he's getting passed by inches by cars going at about 50 kilometres an hour. Even if you're going 30 kilometres an hour down that street on an e-bike, people will still pass you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, and this was reflected, we had a a baseline report before any changes, uh, just to talk, uh, just to identify these issues. And no mode cyclists, pedestrians, or or even car drivers feel safe on 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 Carlisle, especially not cyclists. And you can see why. Um, and that was getting worse. Um, so since uh, before we started, uh, more and more people were reporting these kind of problems, and especially women. There's a, a, a gender difference there as well. So, um, for us, we there have been all kinds of solutions discussed, um, but we saw this as a long-term project of saying that there's no uh, easy solution, but we did need to change people's perceptions uh, and change the way the road's being used. Um, so we set some objectives for this first phase um, of to, to work towards that, and that was they're they're, they're pretty simple. They're, they're not rocket science. Reducing the uh, uh, vehicle speeds and volumes, increase those positive feelings of safety and increase the positive perception of, of the environment as well. Um, and establish a new base where we can start to be a, a bit more ambitious with the kind of changes we're looking at as well in the future. Um, and to do that, we held a succession of workshops, which was a really interesting experience. So we had surveys and workshops, um, and I think most elected members will know that the kind of conversations you have with people who engage and interest in a subject are completely different from the kind of conversations you see on Facebook. Um, and they were really constructive, uh, uh, which, was, which was good. Um, and some common themes emerged, some of which I've already talked about and others we, we didn't know about. Um, some themes uh, centered very strongly on the car yards, and there was a real depth of anger about um, the behavior of some of the car yards parking issues, rudeness, uh, blocking the footpath and things like that. Um, so we learned quite a lot from that exercise. Uh, and one thing it's important to say is that we, um, we didn't present any of these workshops with solutions at first. It was more about information gathering and, and getting ideas as, as well. Solutions came later and we got feedback after that. Um, and out of these workshops, we kind of had uh, developed a, a short list of, of interventions, um, some of which, um, most of which were physical interventions and others were, uh, were more to do with talking to the car yards. But these were the physical interventions um, and they s centered around these eight, uh, eight areas. Um, one important one was that slip road, which I'll come to it in a minute at the end of Carlisle, Hyderabad that free left turn where people just use, where, uh, which people just use to speed down when the traffic lights change on, on Hyderabad. 
Uh, people suggested roundabouts, which was, a, which was uh, not something we'd brought to the table as well, but um, that came out really strongly during these workshops as well. Entry statements um, to, uh, to, uh, to represent uh, Mokimoki Island, which used to be where that reserve is now at the end of Thackeray, um, and more pedestrian crossings and whatever we could do to try and improve the environment in terms of uh, visual amenity. Um, the other thing, we didn't manage to deliver all of these for various reasons. One of those reasons was um, bonding cutoff was the middle of this year. Um, and although we tried to carry that over, uh, we couldn't. Um, so NZCA um, required that all funding had to be spent by, by June this year. Um, we didn't pursue the uh, slip road idea um, although it would have had a massive impact for, for two real reasons. Um, the first was we got really strong public feedback um, that it would cause chaos, so we went away and, um, <laughs> um, and did some modelling on that, which, which didn't show the kind of chaos that, um, uh, that people would predict um, um, if the traffic light phases would change, but we thought it wasn't a good time, especially after all the upheaval in the community lately to, to, to being quite that ambitious. Um, so that's still on the back burner, um, but it's very much an important area because if you've never had the chance to try to walk south <laughs> uh, towards the hill in this area and try and cross that intersection because it's virtually impossible as a, as a pedestrian um, and closing that slip road um, would be a good first step to improving the intersection as a whole. It really needs to change the, uh, the, the configuration of that. So it's something to be looked at in the future, but we decided not to pursue that. Uh, we ran out of time. We engaged with uh, Mana Whenua stakeholders for Pukimokimoki, but just couldn't get anything done on time. And similarly, um, uh, for the Thackeray Street crossing by, um, by the intermediate, um, that actually overlaps with Kiwi Rail land and the level crossing in it. Um, anyone who knows about Kiwi Rail knows that we need about a year or two just to just to get um, permission to work near their land. So um, that, <coughs> that'll have to be uh, for another day as well. The ones we did deliver uh, were uh, a race crossing near the uh, near the uh, near the Kindi, uh, around about at Faraday. Uh, another crossing at Miller and th those countdown boxes uh, that you see around countdown along Tennyson as, as well. Um, they're technically planter boxes even though they haven't got a bottom because that's uh, just one way around to getting, getting around NZTA funding <coughs> regulations really. Um, uh, that's the crossing at uh, the Kindy um, and the crossing on Miller Street and the roundabout at Faraday as well. So the big question, what's changed? And again, we, we asked Focal to look at that this from a variety of angles, another survey, lots of conversations, uh, speed data taken from different sources, and actually looking to see uh, physically what had changed on the, on the street as well, so just observation. Um, so you've already seen those benchmark figures um, about how met, what percentage of people feel unsafe. Um, uh, before we started, so the post change figures show a really pleasing change in just 15% of pedestrians now report feeling unsafe using Carlisle, which is, um, we're really pleased with that reduction. Um, surprising as it was that most motorists also feel unsafe, and if you don't feel safe when you're enclosed in a metal box, <laughs> when are you going to feel safe? But even that's gone down as well to 39%. Um, cyclists, and although we didn't, um, as you were saying, we didn't actually put, uh, put in specific cycling um, facilities, uh, it seems like the reduction in speeds has, has changed that, although I'm surprised that um, it has changed that much. Uh, mode share on Carlisle, uh, we can't report much change of that, it's still dominated by uh, uh, vehicles, but, um, and we can't report more pedestrians and cyclists using it, although surprisingly 37% of people say they do use it as a pedestrian and 18% of the cyclists, uh, which is encouraging. Um, drilling down into specific modes, um, 
from, from conversations and surveys, this is kind of a summary of what people have told us about uh, Carlisle based on, on their mode and, and vehicle drivers um, reported mixed changes. Um, there's a broad agreement that uh, they think traffic has slowed down. Uh, a few people thought the raised crossings were too steep. Um, got huge feedback about the roundabout, which really surprised us. Um, and for, for, for a relatively uh, minor change, we, we got uh, uh, a really surprising number of positive uh, comments and emails coming in about that, which for something we hadn't actually considered originally in the pr project, but just came out of community feedback was, was interesting. Um, and we also got a few um, comments about the road markings, especially around <coughs> countdown where we've closed back quite a <coughs> So with uh, regards to that road markings, do you think that's predominantly that you can sort of still see the old ones? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So um, we've checked that, especially at night, and when it's been raining, uh, yeah. you can see uh, they reflect off uh, oh, where they've been the tried to cover off. Normal, so they're quite yeah. noticeable still. Yeah. So we can talk about that in a, in a bit, but there are we have got some plans to try to address that. Yeah, yeah. they are too obvious. Uh, pedestrians, again, um, a huge variety of opinions, but a, again, a consensus Thank that you. traffic was slower, um, concerns about visibility um, at the crossings too, um, especially around Miller, um, and a recurring theme was the position of the Faraday crossing um, as a key concern, and I'll, c I'll come back to that in a minute, so hold that thought. Cyclists. Um, and as you mentioned, there's still not enough street, uh, space for, for cyclists, um, especially where um, the islands tend to, tend to pinch that room and the roundabout as well, um, and some feedback about those confusing road markings too. So given the number of concerns and queries we had about the position of the, uh, the roundabout on Faraday, we, we uh, had a separate exercise just to watch that on four separate occasions for an hour or two, just to confirm um, whether these uh, whether these worries were uh, uh, were representative or not. Um, and it's the first thing to say is that if if you make a change like this from a from a standard intersection to a roundabout, you expect due to un unfamiliarity uh, with drivers that people are going to make mistakes. Um, uh, and, but these, um, these manual observations did pick up near misses. Um, part of the issue is due to the fact that um, we really did not have much choice about where we could put the, um, the crossing. We had to move it away from the intersection. But the history of Carlisle is, seems, over the years seems to be that more and more vehicle crossings and more and more cut downs have been created until <laughs> the whole, virtually the whole street. And where, we've, where there's, where there's a, a vehicle crossing or a cut down, where it's really hard to get rid of because businesses tend to want to keep them. So the long and short of that is that we really did not have any choice about where we could position the crossing if we wanted to keep it. Um, it is uh, far enough in, in theory to be safe, but it is causing some confusion um, in that it's quite close to the, to the roundabout. Um, if we took it further away, then we're away from the desire line for pedestrians, um, and they probably wouldn't use it. Um, so it's this delicate balancing act. Um, I think this is one we're going to repeat the exercise to see as people become more familiar with it, it whether it becomes uh, there are less near misses, which I think the report um, pointed out is due to a variety of reasons, including mobile phone and smoking and things like that. Um, but um, I had a very interesting conversation with the, uh, the doctor's surgery, which is sitting around about where that pedestrian symbol is on, on the map. Um, and they reported that before the roundabout went in, because they have a grandstand view of, <laughs> of this intersection, they, they were constantly hearing screeching brakes on the crossing um, every day. They say that now there are still near misses, but of a different sort turning left out of Faraday from the south, um, but it's, they feel it's generally safer because the speeds are lower. Um, 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, um, through the chair. Um, thanks for that last bit. I was going to ask the, ask about where the near misses were coming from because as a driver, yep. I have found it way... You're driving up Faraday and you're going to go and turn left and you kind of glance to your right to make sure there's no car coming because it's a roundabout now. Yeah. And you're like, boom, and then hello, you're right at the um, pedestrian and there's someone on it. Like, that yeah. is yeah. is quite scary, yeah. actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the roundabout gives you permission to go. <laughs> yes, which, which is not what you had when you had an yeah. intersection there. So, yeah. 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 Um, so we will repeat that exercise and look okay. at where, ways we can make it I safer. think that would be interesting because this was obviously quite early on. Like, if you've made that mistake mm. once, you would be far more conscious now when mm. you're driving down there to look at the pedestrian crossing as well. Like, you wouldn't do it again, would you? No, but <laughs> no, 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 but human, no, no, no. But yeah. in all honesty, human nature, when you're used to around how roundabouts work, you look that way, there's no one coming, and so you yeah. automatically think I've got the right of way. And so I have to tell myself really loud in my head, pedestrian, 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 mm. yeah. to remind myself that it's there. Like I can see how it could happen yeah. quite mm. easily. Yeah. 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 Um so we will keep an eye on that. Um, it's it's um, it's a bit of a relief that speeds have gone down, um, and we've confirmed that with some speed data. Um, and there's two sources for this. One's TomTom data, it's called, um, which is not necessarily the old navigation yeah. system you had in your car, but it's actually data harvested from Android phones. Um, and what they do is ask, interrogate a data set uh, of all cars traveling between X and Y, uh, <laughs> um, and then work out volumes and speeds at various points. So we've got four, and I apologize if, if it's a bit hard to read those, but, we're, um, but we've got four points there where we looked at uh, average speed and 85th centile speed, um, and they show that average speeds have dropped by nine kilometers an hour, which is quite huge. The speed limit is 50. Um, and now we're um, in certain places we're, uh, we're seeing much lower speeds than that. Um, this is a bit of a grisly <coughs> chart for after lunch, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that, but it basically shows that um, uh, the difference in risk of death <laughs> at certain speeds, so it's basically saying at 50, 50 kilometers an hour, you've got an 80% chance of dying. Mm. Um, which is a bit grisly, sorry, but, uh, and it's a bit, bit early for a, for a post-lunch quiz, but uh, any ideas, any ideas what your chance of dying are at 40? Uh, so, around 40 odd? 45. 45%? 40. <laughs> any others? I'm going to stick with my 30 odd. What your chance is at 40? Chance of dying. Come on, put us out of our misery. Put you out of your misery. 30%. Uh, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on I'm note. <laughs> no chocolate fish, <laughs> though. Um, we give her a round of applause. So, so, so it's, it, it's almost like an exponential <laughs> decrease. Um, so at 30 yeah. kilometres an hour, which is where we're seeing yeah. um, speeds along mm -hmm. Carlisle, it's a 10% chance of um, of death, which is a massive difference for, for a few kilometres an hour. And you might wonder why uh, I, I'm so interested in that when New Zealand sits so highly in, in road safety um, fatality figures in OECD figures. It sits right at the top. Actually, sorry, that's upside down. We sit right at the bottom. <laughs> uh, but we are beating Chile and Costa Rica, so um, that's good news. Oh, and the United States. <laughs> um, and it is particularly good news for round about the kindy because we know, uh, talking to the kindy we, uh, and parents of the kindy there, we know that people do want to get across there and the kindy have been agitating for a crossing there for, for years. And there is finally one there. And this is where actually we saw the biggest speed reduction. So where it used to be sitting at about 50, it's more like 30. Um, we used to have that problem where cars would steam round off Hyderabad and probably accelerate as they came into Carlisle, but that's not happening anymore, which is really good news. Um, and this is all confirmed. That was TomTom -tom data, so from phones, but uh, the more traditional method is just to put a rubber, rubber tube across, in which we did that um, at the dairy, and that kind of confirms those figures as well. 
um, about a third less, uh, 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 a third of drop in, in, in speeds. And also, interestingly, a drop in vehicle numbers. So what, we've, what we seem to have done is diverted, as expected, vehicles from Carlisle and onto Thackeray. Is that Thackeray. the top line, Owen? Which sorry? one's the, oh, sorry, is it, I just, which one's the loss, drop in volume? Uh, the the oh, top sorry, line, to total not. vehicles. So the 81, uh, the year before the changes, there were about 81,000 vehicles in a week using Carlisle. And that went down to 79. Um, I'd never go down Carlisle now. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> Thackeray is so much easier and safer yeah. <laughs> and clearer. <laughs> uh, and, and, that's, and that's the objective, really, because yeah. um, Carlisle is, is, is an activity street. You should be using it for access to businesses, to fast food, even to the car yards, and you should be using the Thackeray as, a, as an arterial. No, I still go down Carlisle. Um, I was young. <laughs> So I mentioned uh, there was a bit of anger about the car yards, and this is still an ongoing thing. Um, at the beginning of the project, we did a drone survey, um, which which recorded car movements in car parks for a day, um, and it showed that uh, there were certain hotspots where occupancy of car parks was really high all day, but more importantly, it showed that there were the same cars all day as well, and those who've you've walked past the Mercedes garage will be familiar with that. Um, so there's been a few efforts to try and address this, and that's an ongoing thing. The parking team got their regular ticket. Um, I know the regulatory team have talked to the Mercedes garage as well um, and are trying to address it. Um, but this is a tough one. It's going to take time as well. Um, but for the moment, we don't seem to have achieved much change in uh, the occupancy rates um, on the long-term car parks for the moment. Juliet. Uh, just a question about that. Is there any chance of putting parking metres right near where the car yards are so that that's enforced without us having to enforce? That's well, what we talked about there. imagine how the rest of the community will feel yeah. about having to pay for parking metres. Oh, but just a few, you know, just we, by the car yards. We, we, yeah. I mean, we then discussed that we shot the other day. And they'll sit empty all day, Quite every big day. Process. And then the car yards will just start using them again. And we've still only got the same number of parking wardens that are there to monitor the areas. So, how much is the fine? Is it just like the twelve dollar? So for the car park, you know, for the car yard, that's probably not a big enough um, disincentive, I suppose. I th I, it, it, it is a disincentive. Um, talking to the regulatory team, um, there is a proposal to start towing, yeah. but um, for those cars that are marked for sale. Um, which you can't do just if you if if they're overstaying uh, if if they're overstaying as a normal car. Um, so we'll have to see how the, how that goes. Um, mm. But the fine doesn't seem to dissuade people because they are they are ticketing people on Carlisle. But I think they take that as the price for a day's parking. Yeah. Yeah, because mm. it would. Yeah. It's only twelve dollars or something. Like that, uh, right? I think parking fines have gone up just in the last just few recently, weeks. Though. So yeah. I would imagine it's much more than twelve dollars now because I think yeah. the average went up by seventy percent. Yeah. yeah, sorry, just, uh, do we not have a policy, or it could be area dependent, but a policy on cars for sale on the side of the road? Like yeah, I, yeah, we do. Um, but that's, is that likely, like, certain areas, because I remember there used to be an area where people always used to park their cars and then all of a sudden they've stopped, yeah. and the sign got put up, but... Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, church road. Church road. Yes, correct. <laughs> uh, one of the themes from this project is that uh, there's a massive sense of entitlement I get from the from the car yards, and I know the, the regulatory team has gone to talk to um, the Mercedes garage about this and basically got shouted at. <laughs> um, so, which is why they're looking at, at towing and things like that. Uh, but um, there's a, a sense that the road belongs to them. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and no, I was just yeah, sorry, I was just curious about that. Thank you. Yeah. Just got to ticket the petrol ones, not Sorry, the Yes. Ah. Uh, you know this one? Yeah. Makes sense? Yep. Well, got to be displaying plates and a registration as well. Mm. Yeah. It's $200, $440 or something. And yeah. Yeah. I guess if you're selling a car for $120,000, then yeah. that's a drop in the ocean. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, so... 
I wish it was a million dollar question, but it's not, <laughs> it's not quite a million dollar question, but what next, which is what we're really keen to talk to you about. Um, so the Streets for People program has actually ended. There's no more funding from Waka Katai and ZTA, uh, and there won't be for the foreseeable future because that team is being disbanded. Um, we've met met the original objectives, but this was really a start, and we do see this as a long-term project. And there's a lot more to do, particularly to make it si uh, safer for cyclists and pedestrians, um, but this is a project that's gonna change the street over time, and we never expected to have a, a huge impact in just a year or two. Um, so one of the questions that needs to be answered is, Technically, uh, the interventions that have gone in are temporary. And they're made of temporary materials. Um, they, they're made of material that could mean that they could be there for, um, for, for, for a few years. They're not going to start disintegrating overnight. Um, but um, whether we make them um, put, put more permanent materials in or, or change them is, uh, as we carry on monitoring. We've already made some changes to them based on the feedback we've got, particularly about the ramps at either end for disabled users um, and to make the accessibility uh, better. Um, and we're just talking about the, the roundabout too. There's probably still more work we can do on trying to make that more visible and, and trying to improve safety around there. Um, there's the changes we never got to do, um, that slip road, which is gonna be on the horizon for a while, um, but particularly in the context of improving the intersection as a whole. Pukimokimoki Island, which would have been good to do, that roundabout at the bottom of Chaucer. Um, I think the roundabout was really well received and it has played a, or on Faraday, has, has played a role in reducing speeds too. And particularly important is the Thackeray Street crossing near the intermediate because in transferring um, traffic from Carlisle to Thackeray, uh, we're probably making it more difficult for kids to cross on Thackeray, and there is actually a plan to, to address that too. But, um, and, and some others that maybe we haven't thought about yet, and it would be good to, to get suggestions from today um, about priorities and, uh, and other ideas too. Um, we've, uh, you'll see in the report that got distributed, there's a whole raft of suggestions and, and um, themes, and most of which I've covered, particularly about the speed humps and the crossing by the roundabout, um, and some of those we've addressed already, the car parking. Um, mm. uh, uh, and I think we'll continue to get those kind of um, comments coming back um, now and in the future, and uh, we're, we're looking at them all the time. But in terms of today, I'm, I'm interested to see what people think of the priorities next and, and where we should be going for this next and get some feedback um, from you guys. First question, no more funding from NZTA. Yeah. Do we have any funding in our LTP? We have a very small amount. Uh, we're talking, instead of the hundreds of thousands which we were talking about before, we have tens of thousands, yeah. Specifically for Carlisle Street. Mm. Yeah. Um, you talked about, I guess, making some of these changes permanent. But for me, until you finish the other bits and pieces that could influence what you've already done, I wouldn't be rushing to make them, them permanent. Yep. Um, I like the idea of a roundabout at the, at the bottom of Choicer. Um, and I go back to during the cyclone, we had no power and the lights were out and we made them into roundabouts. Yeah. And they seem to work really well as roundabouts, mm. and you never have to maintain the lights or the power or, 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 yeah. or have a light out again. Yeah. What, what's your thinking or consideration for, for making that end? And you know, we talk about getting rid of the slipway, mm. to actually turning it into a roundabout. Um, that is an option. It's complicated by the fact that Hyderabad's a state highway, and it's the yep. official route from the coast towards the port as well. Yep. Um, and a roundabout would need NZCA's agreement uh, to implement as well, but um, and it would also possibly make it diff more difficult to 
get pedestrians across um, mm. where they need to go. But um, it's not something we've we've looked at, but could be worth. Yeah, I mean they've got the, as, as you head round the rest of that road, it's all roundabouts, anyway. Yeah. And yeah. admittedly, it is it is difficult for pedestrians, but it, you sometimes look at where are you going to if you're crossing that <coughs> busy state highway anyway. Yeah. And I mean I, I was there yesterday trying to scoot through it all on the on the scooter. Yeah. And yeah, it is difficult. You've got to go down Thackeray and across, and yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure if the lights kind of work or, or could be done better. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I agree. I think it was really noticeable during the cyclone, mm -hmm. wasn't it? That uh, yeah. things seemed to move a bit. <laughs> and I, I, I like the other stuff you've you've done down the road because I know uh, um, one consideration was one weighing the street. Yeah. And all the food vendors down there went, oh, wait a second, we need yeah. the five o'clock traffic. That's what gets us through. Yeah. And we were going to run the traffic the other way apparently, and they were, yeah, it was it was not going to be the done thing. Yeah. So I like it, and even and I'm even going to say I like your planter boxes where they are. Um, I think a really good solution. So you know, you've done, you guys have done really well down there. Mm. 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 Oh. oh, just just one thing. I've just come back from the UK, and and I did lots of observing over there. And one thing that I noticed coming into roundabouts and often up to pedestrian crossings, they have these like. They're not speed bumps, but they're little ridged bits that slow traffic down because you basically get a almost like a reminder that you're coming to a something. And it was right. quite um, so instead of you know the issues we've got with like um, the fire engines and stuff not being able to get in and getting over things, you kind of got this as yeah. you got up there. And yeah. it was just something I noticed. My son was actually driving. This was actually <coughs> in Scotland, and I just thought how well it worked because it slowed you down automatically. Yeah. I don't know if it, <coughs> anyone else knows anything about that, but it was just an observation, and they had them before some of the pedestrian crossings as well. So instead yeah. of having it raised, you actually had this almost like an automatic reminder that you were, had, were slowing down. Mm. Yeah. Just an observation. Mm. But, so you didn't get the big, mm, mm, you just got this little... Do you mean like a rumble strip on the road? Well, they were they yeah. they were they went all the way across, mm. but they were yeah. only small, so you just it slowed you, but it, you didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've, we've had them, I them? think, down Awatoto Road towards the Miani end. <laughs> but when we did the Ford Road roundabout, they put something in like that, and it scared the hell out of everyone. And they all crashed or something. It was, oh. We did a big raised one. It was too high. No, no, it was <laughs> no, no. Oddly. No, it was just, no, it was just an observation of a different yeah. way that I've never seen them in New Zealand, but it, I thought yeah. it was quite a good way of... Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, well, I've seen from the UK, so we'll... Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> what do they think about that? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's just tactile strips and the approach. So it doesn't tend to slow people down very much. Well, it was enough definitely to slow you down. Mm. 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 Yeah, just in terms of cycling, um, the biggest thing is slowing the traffic because, I mean, anyone who goes down there on a bike knows that if someone's screaming past you fast, it just really scares you. So it, is, it has improved, but anything else we can do to make it slower, that will be the biggest thing to keep, keep cyclists safe. Yeah. Max? Um, I just wondered what you thought with all the information that you've got. What, what did you come up with any suggestions from the people that you surveyed about how you might spend that tens of thousands of dollars? Um, personally, um, I think we have an obligation to uh, address Thackeray Street by the intermediate. Um, if we're diverting traffic along Thackeray, uh, we did put a tube count out there at the same time as the Carlisle tube count, and it showed that traffic had increased on Thackeray, but speeds had changed, stayed the same. Um, but we do get complaints from parents saying that their kids are finding it hard to cross there, um, mm. and the net effect, um, if we carry on diverting traffic to Thackeray, it means that it will get harder. So I, th I think with the money we've got, that has to be one of the priorities to try and sort that crossing mm. out and make it safer uh, partic uh, perhaps with an island in the middle and perhaps with more obvious um, tactile surfacing as well. So. so considering that 
And your comment earlier that the temporary interventions could last a few years. Yeah. Is it an option to leave the temporary interventions on Carlisle for now, which will give us more time to assess how that's working, spend the money we have got to put in that yep. crossing on Thackeray yep. with a view to, in our mm. annual plan and LTP process, building in some funding for Carlisle Street and some permanent measures in a few years' time? Yes, yes. And then maybe we can start addressing things like the roundabout, which shouldn't, um, at the end of Chaucer, which will continue to divert traffic away from Carlisle yeah. and, and not make that a, such an attractive through route. Yeah. So sorry, could I've just left the room for a second. Where are you thinking about the pedestrian crossing on Thackeray? Right by the intermediate. Faraday. Um, Faraday. Near Faraday. Faraday. Yeah. One that's in now, you mean? Yes. Oh, one that's in now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just, just sort of redoing that a bit. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. Traffic yeah. move. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And you're getting quite significant sunstrike at certain times of the year. So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you do, actually. Yeah. Yep. And sometimes when cars are parked along there, <laughs> sometimes you have a car transporter there. Yeah. Yes. And it's quite hard to see around. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the road sort of curves. So I know of an accident that was there due to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Let alone kids. Mm. Mm. So does anyone have a, re a completely different view or any comments to make on what I've just suggested as some guidance? I'm happy with the mm. guidance mm -hmm. that's been provided. Yeah. Get the best use out of our, you know, our temporary assets. Yes. Yeah. So just to clarify, where exactly is that a pedestrian crossing you're talking about on Thackeray? Like, where? So there's an existing one on Thackeray Faraday intersection, Same right, time. right by the Army Centre, and near the school as well, um, to to create a. a enough width to put an island in, we'd have to move oh, slightly yep. further away, but not very far. But, um, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. yeah. Yep. Sorry, Kirst. My, my only advice is just um, just to double check with, um, blind and low vision are right there, yep. and just to double check with the team there to make sure we get it right. Yes. They're quite passionate about their tactiles and stuff. So yeah, um, sure we... we have taken them out actually on the existing crossings and looking at that one already, and they gave us a lot of feedback about that. Thank so. you very much. Mm. Awesome. Excellent. Um, just related, in terms of the um, temporary thing, uh, installations on Shakespeare, um, do we have a life expectancy of those? Um, we just Owen, Owen said a few years. A few years. Shakespeare. Well, those ones have already been in for a few years. Just oh, on Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Yeah, the, the Shakespeare. Innovating Streets projects that we did a couple of years ago. I don't know whether there's... Plans at the moment. Um, a couple of them are a bit like grandfather's broom. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have um, I guess it would be helpful to actually have the same sort of information that we've had today about Carlisle Street about Shakespeare Road. Mm to see if we've actually achieved the outcomes that we were aiming for yeah. um, before we made any decisions about investing further there. Yeah. yeah. Rightio, I think, I think that's us. Excellent. Thanks, Thank Owen. Thank you very Thanks. much. Appreciate Thank your time. You.